Hello and welcome to Apple A Day. In this episode, I'm going to show you that it's possible to create macros for Apple numbers using AppleScript. By the end of this tutorial, you're going to be able to write a basic Apple script which will communicate to Apple numbers. You'll be able to execute the script using a keyboard shortcut which will be set up using the shortcuts application. Let me show you quickly what we're going to create. In this numbers document, I've got a column of values that I want to sum. I'll select the cell where I'm going to be putting the sum formula. It just has to be in the same column as the values that I'm summing. I'll go up to my shortcuts menu and select this numbers sum shortcut. And check that out, instant formula added, summing up all of the values above the selected cell. This can also be called using a keyboard shortcut. I will be going over the shortcuts application in a bit. We just have to do one thing at a time. So the first thing to do is we have to write an Apple script that will perform the following. Number one, it's got to get the currently selected cell and proceed only if one cell is selected. If more than one cell is selected, we just need to exit and not do anything. Number two, get the range of all of the cells above the selected cell while taking into account the number of header rows. We don't want the header rows to be included within the sum formula. And number three, add the formula to the selected cell using the range determined in step two. That's pretty much it. It seems easy enough, but it's AppleScript, so it can be tricky. By the way, I'm not gonna be teaching AppleScript programming in this tutorial. However, I will be explaining the specific statements that I'm using. I'm going to assume that you have some basic knowledge of programming. So let's go over this step by step. Along with this numbers document, I've got a blank Apple script window open as well. So the first thing you want to do is talk to Apple numbers. So the very first line I'm going to write is tell application numbers and numbers is in double quotes. And then I'm going to press return and every tell command has to have an end tell. So I'll add that line in now. I'll type in end tell and press return. So all of the code between the tell statement and the end tell statement will be talking to the Apple numbers application. Now, of course, this doesn't do anything yet. So next we need to tell numbers which document we're talking to, as well as which sheet and then which table within that sheet. So after the first tell statement, I'm going to type tell the first table of the active sheet of document one. And again, this is going to require an end tell. So I'll press return and type in end tell. Now, if I run this by pressing the play button or by typing in command R, it compiles and formats fine. But again, it doesn't actually do anything yet. But just to test to see if we're communicating, I'm going to enter in a line to return the selection range. I'll type in return selection range within that second tell block. I'll go to the numbers document and make sure that I have something selected. And then I'll run the script by either pressing Command R or pressing the play button. And in the result portion of the script editor window, we can see that it returned the selected range. Okay, so now we know communication is working. Let's move on. So in order to select all of these cells above the selected cell, we need to get the selection range. We're going to store the range into a variable. So I'll type in set the range, and the range is the variable, to selection range. And selection range is what we just returned a moment ago. So now that range is going to be stored within the variable, the range. Then, before we do anything else, we want to make sure only a single cell is selected. Putting the sum formula into the selected cell only works if one cell is selected. So we need to get the count of the selected range. So I'm going to type in set the count to count of every cell in the range. So the range is the variable that is storing the current selection range, and the count is a new variable we just created that is going to contain the count of the cells in the range. So once we have the count, we only want to bother continuing if the count is equal to 1. So the next line will be a logic statement. So we're going to type in, if the count equals 1, I'm going to stop here for a second because I narrated this after I did the screen recording, and I clearly typed in, if the count is greater than 1. I will be coming back to fix that when I realize it, but it is supposed to be if the count equals one, followed by the word then. I press return, and just like the tell statement, the if statement also needs an end. So in the next line, I'll type in end if. Then I'll click on the hammer to compile to make sure everything is entered properly. So far, so good. 
Now I'm going to add a comment here so we know what's supposed to be happening. Only proceed if a single cell is selected. And you add a comment by typing in two dashes at the beginning. Comments in AppleScript are ignored by the compiler. They're for the programmer to help follow the code. So next, we need to get the cell that's selected to get its position and determine the cells above it to include in the formula. So I'll type in another comment, get the selected cell, and then the line set the cell to first cell of the range. So this will store the first cell information into the variable, the cell. And notice that it retrieves the first cell, even though we know there's only one cell anyway within that range. Now we need to extract the position from the cell object. I'll add another comment, get the row and column of the selection, and then another line to get the row and one more line to get the column. So I'll type in set the row to row of the cell. And that gets the row from the cell. And then the next line, set the column to column of the cell. And of course, that gets the column information of the cell. So now we need to get the column name, meaning the letter, you know, like A, B, C, or D. And this is needed to assign the cell range in the sum formula. Once again, I'll add a comment, get the column letter of the column. And then a line of code to store the column letter name into a variable. So I'll type in set the column letter to name of the column. And the name of the column is the letter. Okay, so now we know the column letter to use. Next, we need the row above the selected cell row. I'll add another comment. Get the row number of the row above the selection. There's a property to the row object that will give us a numeric value. It's called address. And the address is the same as the row. And whatever the address is, we need to subtract one because we want the row above it. So I'll add this line of code. Set the row number to, and then in brackets, I'm gonna type in address of the row. And then outside the brackets, I'm gonna type in minus one. So if the row number or the address is 10, then this will set the row number to nine. Okay, so now we need the full name of the last cell to be selected in the range for the formula. The full name would be something like E5, which means column E and row five. I'll add one more comment. Get the last cell to be selected in the range and type in the code, set the last selected cell to the column letter and then an ampersand the row number. So the ampersand is used to append two text values together, the column letter and the row number. That'll give us a cell name for the last cell in the range. So let's see what we have for the last selected cell. I'll type in a line saying, return the last selected cell, and then run the script. And I get nothing back. Well, this is because of the mistake I made earlier where I typed in if the count is greater than one, and it should be if the count is equal to one. So I'm gonna fix that and run it again. And that returns A19. And looking over at the numbers document, the selected cell is A20. And A19 is one above it, and that's exactly what we want. So far, so good. So the next thing we need is the first cell. We already have the column letter, we just need the starting row. We also have to be aware of the number of header rows so we know where the first row containing data actually starts. I'm gonna add this next line back at the top of the script before we get the range. So at the top, I'll type in set the starting row to, and then in brackets, header row count plus one. So what this does is take the number of header rows, the header row count, which is one in this example, and then adds one to it. So the starting row is two. Okay, so we're almost done with the script. Hopefully you're following along okay. Next, we need to actually build the full selection range. And that's the first cell name and the last cell name separated by a colon. Something like A3 colon A12. I'll add another comment. Now build the selection range to be used by the function. And then type in the code. Now this one's a bit complicated. Set the formula range to and two opening brackets, and then name of cell, the starting row, of the column, closing bracket, then an ampersand, and then a colon in double quotes, and another ampersand, and the last selected cell, 
and then close the bracket. So let me explain it. So this part in the brackets, name of cell, the starting row of the column. So starting row is numeric and we know it has a value of two. So in AppleScript, you can access an object by an index number if there are numerous objects of the same type. So a column contains numerous cells and they're numbered. So basically this is saying, get me the name of cell number two of the column I'm in. So let's see what this returns. I'll type in return the formula range and press play. And this gives us A2 colon A19. And looking at the numbers document, that's exactly right. We want to sum all the cells from A2 down to A19. And our sum formula is going to go into cell A20. So now to the final line of code. A lot of comment. Add the function to the cell. And then type in this line. Set value of the cell to and then double quotes, and then equals, sum, opening bracket, double quotes again, and ampersand, and then the formula range, and another ampersand, and then a closing bracket in double quotes. I didn't actually say this, but hopefully you can see it, that I'm actually typing in a space around the ampersand. So it's space, ampersand, space, the formula range, and so on. So let me go over this. So to reiterate, the variable, the cell, is the current selected cell. This is where we want to put in the sum formula. So this code says to set the value of that cell to an equal sign, which will indicate a formula. And then of course the function name sum, and then an opening bracket so that we can put in the parameter for sum, which is the cell range. And that's going to be the formula range that we just calculated, and then a closing bracket. So this whole section here is building the text to be populated in the cell. And again, the ampersands are simply joining the individual text strings together into a single string. So that's it, this should work. I'll select the last cell and I'll run the script. And immediately the sum function has been added and the highlighted cells, well, those are the cells that are being summed. I'll double click on the cell to look at the formula and it's pretty simple. We have the sum function and the cell range. I'll also sum up this column containing currency values. Works perfectly. I'll show one more example. Here we have similar data, but for some reason we also have five rows of headers. Let's see if we accounted for that properly. I'll select the last cell in the column and run the script, and it worked. The header cells are ignored. I'm going to clear that now, and I'm going to select two cells and then run the script. This shouldn't do anything because we only want to add the formula if a single cell is selected. And nothing happened, which is great. I suppose we should add a message indicating that this only works if one cell is selected. So before the end if, which closes the if the count equals one statement, I'm going to type in the word else and press return. And the code after this else statement will be performed if the count equals one is false. In other words, if the count is not equal to one. So I'll use the display dialog command to show a message. So I'll type in display dialog and then in double quotes, select only one cell and try again, period. And then the word buttons with a brace bracket and in double quotes, the word okay and a closing brace bracket and then default button one with title macro failed in double quotes. So if you wanna know more about display dialog, I created a detailed tutorial on it and you can find that right here. I also put a link in the description below. So I'll run this again, still with two cells selected, and now we get the message that it failed. I'll select just one cell again and run it to confirm it works, and it does. Okay, so that's your first numbers macro. So how do we get it from the script window to showing up in the shortcuts menu? Well, let's do that next. I'll find the shortcuts app just by pressing command space, and then I'll type in shortcuts to search for it. Then I'll select it to launch the app. Before I do anything, I'm going to delete the existing number shortcut by right-clicking on it and selecting delete. So now we want to add a new shortcut, and to do that, I'm just going to click on this plus sign. So in the shortcuts window, we want to execute an Apple script. So over on the right, select scripting, and scroll down in this list until you find the script editor section, and then double-click on run Apple script. In the main viewer, you can see the command to run the Apple script has been created. Where it says your script goes here, we're going to copy and paste the script that we just wrote. So I'm going to go back to the script editor. 
and press Command A to select it all, and then press Command C to copy it. Going back to shortcuts, I'm gonna triple click on the Your Script Goes Here line, and that'll select the whole line, and then I'm gonna press Command V to paste in our script, and that'll overwrite the selection. I'll click on the hammer icon to make sure it compiles properly. Now next, we need to give this shortcut a name. So click on the top of the window where it says Run Apple Script. Here, you're gonna type in your shortcut name. I'm just gonna call this numbers-sum. Press return or tab for the name to register, and then just close the window. So in the main shortcuts window, you should see the numbers-sum shortcut. Let's make sure it works. I'll go back to the numbers document and clear the sum formula by pressing delete. I'll still leave that cell selected. And then in the shortcuts app, I'll click on the play button for the shortcut we just created. And it worked. So we still have to add this to the shortcuts menu as well as assign it a keyboard shortcut. Let's edit the shortcut to see how to do that. I'll double click on it to edit it. And next, click on this shortcut details icon in the top right. And then to add it to the shortcuts menu, turn on this option called pin in menu bar. So as soon as that's checked, it will show up in the shortcuts menu. And there it is. Next, we wanna add a keyboard shortcut. So click on the Add Keyboard Shortcut button, and I'm gonna use my numeric keypad, and I'm gonna press Command-Shift-8. Now I have noticed that adding a keyboard shortcut can be very finicky, and you might go through several shortcuts until you find one that works. Just something to be aware of. Okay, so I'll close the window, and quit the Shortcuts app, and then back to Numbers, I'm gonna clear the sum again, and then I'm gonna select the Numbers-Sum shortcut from the menu, just to make sure it's working. I'll clear out that cell one more time, and next I'm gonna try it with the keyboard shortcut. So I'll press Command-Shift-8, and that worked too. I'll select two cells this time, and press Command-Shift-8 again, and now we get the warning message. So there you have it. A macro written in AppleScript that creates a formula in Apple Numbers, which can be activated by the shortcuts menu or by a keyboard shortcut. All done using the shortcuts application to make it accessible. And of course you can create any formula using this technique, not just some. If you want to see another numbers tutorial on creating a macro for a different function, just let me know in the comments below. Well, good luck on your scripting journey talking to Apple numbers. That's it for today. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks for watching. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.